But before looking at the IMF plans for the future, we look at the past. The Allies had barely landed at Normandy when the idea of a monetary fund began to move rapidly from concept to reality. The idea was that by working together to increase world economic welfare, nations would also increase the chance of political peace. With war still raging, the foundation was laid for the International Monetary Fund. In the summer of 1944, in the remote mountains of New Hampshire, the staff of the reopened Mount Washington Hotel was preparing for the gathering officially known as the United Nations Monetary and Financial Conference. One of the intellectual godfathers of the IMF was Harry Dexter White, who was already anticipating the Allies' victory. The fund is essential to winning and preserving peace. That is why the representatives of 44 nations here in Bretton Woods are taking steps to prevent a repetition of the currency chaos which is usually followed in the wake of war. The site was chosen because Henry Morgenthau, the U.S. Treasury Secretary, wanted the conference held in a remote location. Today, a diesel chugs into the station, depositing tourists who come to enjoy the spectacular White Mountains. On July 1, 1944, the visitors who arrived were intent on structuring the economic outlines of the post-war world. The delegates had come by overnight train directly from a preliminary conference in New Jersey. Henry Morgenthau was the official host. He told the delegates that prosperity, like peace, is indivisible. Poverty, wherever it exists, is menacing to us all and undermines the well-being of each of us. It can be no more localized than war. The conference was guided by British economist John Maynard Keynes and Harry Dexter White, a U.S. Treasury official. Both Keynes and White wanted to structure a way to avoid repeating the mistakes which led to the Great Depression when world trade collapsed and commodity prices were shattered. One of the main sources of international friction and conflict is the abuse of monetary policy. Countries in the throes of depression adopted cutthroat measures in order to expand their exports and curtail their imports at the expense of other countries' exports. Each man had ideas for institutions that would help bring about prosperity and peace in the post-war world. White knew that the United States was going to be the dominant economic power. He wanted to make sure that the U.S. used that power for a global benefit. And he saw the IMF as an adjunct to that power that would make the world economy function better. Keynes had a different vision because he was worried about U.S. dominance. He wanted a more independent and a larger and more powerful institution that would really be a world central bank that would act as a counterweight to U.S. economic power. So Keynes wanted a bigger and more independent IMF than, than White did, but they both wanted the IMF to be the major uh, player in the post-war international monetary system. The proposal is, it is up to the rest of us, from behind the credit of the devastated and undeveloped countries, and take, each of us, our share in guaranteeing the lenders from ultimate loss. The whole world will join together in a mutual credit pool to shoulder risks which private investors might be unwilling to run. 
White wanted an organization to promote economic growth through international trade and financial stability. Member countries would contribute to it in gold and national currencies. The International Monetary Fund is an instrument for monetary cooperation among the United Nations, designed to promote currency stability and thereby bring higher levels of world trade and employment. The Bretton Woods delegates divided into commissions to do their work. One, headed by Keynes, worked on the World Bank. I will not say that the establishment of the Bank for Reconstruction and Development is more important than the Monetary Fund, but perhaps it is more urgent. UNRWA will provide funds for relief and rehabilitation in the days immediately following liberation. A second commission, headed by White, worked on the fund. The International Monetary Fund will help tie countries over a difficult period and thus prevent recourse to measures which serve only to undermine international trade. Keynes wrote of the sometimes chaotic environment at Bretton Woods, where huge committees met in rooms with bad acoustics, people shouted into microphones in imperfect English, and the Russians, Keynes noted, seemed perplexed by the goings-on. Keynes said the delegates worked every waking minute and that in the end they were utterly exhausted. They did what they'd come to do. On July 22, 1944, in the gold room of the Mount Washington Hotel, the delegates in small groups provisionally signed the Articles of Agreement for the IMF and the World Bank. In three weeks, the delegates had accomplished a remarkable task, a system for economic cooperation which they hoped would result in a better, peaceful, and more prosperous world. They've come together determined to solve their common problems. In our world, prosperity like peace is indivisible. In the fund, we have an instrument for international monetary collaboration, which will prove a major contribution to world peace and world prosperity. There's never been such a far-reaching proposal on so great a scale to provide employment in the present and increase productivity in the future. We've been working quietly, away in the cool woods and mountains of New Hampshire. And I doubt, I doubt if the world yet understands how big a thing we are bringing to birth. the Saturday dance, heard they crowded the floor, couldn't bear it without you, don't get around much anymore, thought I'd visit the club, got as far as the door, they'd have asked me about you, don't get around much anymore. What for? It's awfully different without you. Don't get around much anymore. It's awfully different without you. Don't get around much anymore. 